Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right, everybody sounds awake and ready to go? Ready. Woo All right. Well, thank you so much to everybody for coming out today. It is, uh, you know, I, could, I wish I could say that the weather was really, really nice out, but reality is it's March. However, thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. I also wanted to thank Carol and Westminster for hosting the contest here. So please, a round of applause. <laughs> Carol's actually working on studying at club here. Uh, so if anybody would like to come and visit, you can see her for more information on that. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started and I'll introduce the dignitaries in the house. Starting with our district governor, Mr. Srinivas Sainini. Welcome to the North, Trini. <laughs> I had to do some a little. He didn't make it to the last contest. <laughs> Next, uh, Michelle Cable, who is our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing. <laughs> Jenna Crump, who is our Public Relations Officer. Robert Harrington, who is the District Secretary. Yeah. Our immediate past District Governor, Kyle Rohde. Yeah. Central North Division Governor, Cynthia Leggett. Yes. Southwest Division Governor Donna Weston. <laughs> South Division Governor Don Williams. <laughs> area 43 Area Governor John Levy. B15 uh, Governor Charlene Reinhardt. <laughs> Area C25 Governor Bill Morrill. <laughs> and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. <laughs> and now please welcome uh, the area governors for the North Division. Starting with Area 41, Etha Goatee. Yeah. Area 42, Cleo Scott. Yeah. Area 43, Lori Harrington. Yeah. Area 44, Jesse Lee. Area 45, Ann Peckwell. Yeah. Area 46, Doug Martin. Yeah. And my name is Jane Sanginus, Tostaholic and North Division Governor. Welcome. Now that we've got everybody introduced, everybody ready? Yeah. 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 Please give it up for our Toastmaster for today, Ms. Jenna Crump. Welcome everyone. Please let me remind you, if you have any cell phones or pagers, to please turn them off. Or please put them in the mode of silence. <laughs> Today we will have two contests, Table Topics Contest and the International Speech Contest. The first contest will be the Table Topics Contest. 
When the contest has concluded, we will have a 10-minute break. After the break, we will conduct the International Speech Contest. Contestants, timer, ballot counters, sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that governs this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestant's presentation. You may do so if the time permits during the one minute of silence between presentations. With that, let the contest begin. I will give the speaking order for the Table Topics contest at this time. Contestant number one, Felipe Valdez. Contestant number one, Felipe Valdez. Contestant number two, Jim Bowman. Contestant number two, Jim Bowen. Contestant number three, Deborah Villarreal. Contestant number three, Deborah Villarreal. Contestant number four, Robert Reed. Contestant number four, Robert Reed. Contestant number five, Kevin Henderson. Contestant number five, Kevin Henderson. And contestant number six, Steve Serby. Contestant number six, Steve Serby. Mr. Sergeant at Arms, will you please escort all the contestants out of the room except for our first contestant? We are ready to hear from our Table Topics contestant. This will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will have all the time they need to complete their ballots. We will now begin with the Table Topics contest. <coughs> Contestant number one, Felipe Valdez. Life is life. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts? Felipe Valdez. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters, honored dignitaries, friends, volunteers. Thank you so much for being here. It's always fantastic to see so much support. It warms my heart, and I know I'm the first speaker, so I'll do my very best to warm up the audience. <laughs> now today, I'm answering the question, how would I play a five of hearts? Now, it's very easy to see sometimes that life is like a game. And as we all know, there's a board game called Life, right? So it's appropriate. Well, let me take you back two years, and I'll tell you how I play A5 of Hearts. Well, you've got to understand that I like to take myself outside of my comfort zone. And understand something else about me. I find myself pretty athletic. I like to play softball. I like to run. I like to play basketball. I stopped growing when I was 12, so I decided, okay, maybe the NBA is not in my future. But in 2010, I decided to take on a marathon for the very first time in my life. And I decided, you know what? 
26.2 miles is going to be daunting. I absolutely know it. It's going to be a long way to run. And I've got to make sure I've got to come to this side to warm you guys up too. So I'll do that right now. <laughs> and understand that I took myself out of my comfort zone, but the heart came into play because I had another goal with this marathon. And I'll get to that in just a second. But then by mile 16, I remember running, I felt like I was at a good pace, and things were going well, but then my body started to deteriorate. It's like, ah, oh, all these high fives, these fives of hearts, running by, everyone wishing me good luck and giving me a high five, all this love with the five of hearts. It was working, but then mile 16, it's like, ah, oh, I'm in so much pain. But you know what carried me through the next 10.2 miles? I decided that I was going to get, or I was going to present a ring to who I hoped would be my fiance. So, 26.2 miles, I made it. I'll never forget. I tried to get down on one knee, <laughs> and I couldn't, <laughs> and I fell. <laughs> but I feel like I played my cards right. That five of hearts turned out to be a yes. And today, I ha I'm happy to report that I'm almost one year into my marriage. So hopefully, I've warmed you up today. That's how I would play a five of hearts. Contestant number two, Jim Bowen. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts? Contestant number two, Jim Bowen. I would play the five of hearts proudly right down the middle of the table and say, I'm making the rules here. This is the top card in the deck, all the rest of you lose. <laughs> Who says you have to accept the rules? <clears throat> Make your own if it don't suit you. Or, of course, yes, a lot of the time we have to play by the rules. Like, I only have so much time to speak up here. All right. I'll acknowledge that. But too many people do passively accept rules when they should not. And when you do go out and try to make your own rules, you can make things much better for yourself and hopefully for the rest of the world, too, if you get a chance. But yes, don't passively sit there and accept the idea. Five of hearts, oh, I'm shafted. No, it's what you make of it. Or maybe you just want to... The card, I'm playing a different game. <laughs> but don't necessarily accept the rules of the game as given to you. It might be a much better way for you to play and for everyone else to play too. And this will only come about if people actually go and challenge the rules. So, <clears throat> with that, thank you. One minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots.
Table Topics contestant number two, Deborah Villarreal. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts? Contestant, Deborah Villarreal. I'm only 52. I know I told my age. Women usually don't tell their age. But I can't wait. I am looking forward to so much. We want to get a Winnebago, a small one, and we want to travel the states. We want to stay in one place for a month, pick up whenever we want to, go to another place. No particular pattern. Just get up where we want to go to Minnesota this month, next month maybe Kansas, and just enjoy meeting people. People fascinate me, because we have all kinds of people. We have short people, tall people, older people, and they're fascinating. They can tell you some wonderful stories. And I love listening to the story, talk about their grandkids, what job they've done, where they have been, what they have seen. They have seen a lot of things. And I would like to share my time with those people <coughs> that I meet on the road when I get to be tired. See, that makes me gleam and smile when I get to think about retiring. And I can see that on some of your faces too. <laughs> Smiling when I hear the word retire. So that is my card. I want to retire. Thank you. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Table Topics, contestant number four, Robert Reed. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts? Contestant four, Robert Mead. Five of hearts, a card game. Not one of the bigger cards in the deck, but certainly an important card. I have, I, I'm a lover, I, I really like playing cards. I grew up in Wisconsin. And in Wisconsin, you only play with a half a deck. 
game <laughs> So the, the Five of Hearts for me was one of those cards that really got discarded. wasn't really an important card, um, but it, it was. It, they called it fail. So, um, but for me, the Five of Hearts and the heart itself, I guess, it is representative of what is most important to me in my life. One of my coworkers asked me what motivates me most of all in life. And it isn't money, it isn't power, it's love. It's my family. It's the things that are around me that I enjoy doing and I enjoy spending time with. And that's my family, my two girls, my wife. I love spending time with them. So the Five of Hearts really to me represents that family. It represents the time that I can spend with them out at the parks, uh, going on vacations, family vacations. A lot of wonderful family vacations. Spending time in the evening with them, watching television, simple things in life. And actually, I, I know they wanted to be here with me today to kind of provide support, but unfortunately, weren't able to attend. But it's that time together that really, I think, everybody, at least for me, is my biggest motivation. So the Five of Hearts card game, for me, it's not a cast-off card. It is one of the most important cards in the deck and one of those that I like to play often. Thank you very much. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Contestant number five, Kevin Henderson. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts. Kevin Henderson. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, dignitaries, and welcome guests. The five of hearts. How did she know that's the card that I always hope to get in my hand? <laughs> it's the card that you can play either way. Now on determination. She's exactly right. The cards that we're dealt in life, that's what we have to play with. How we play them, that makes all the difference in the world. We can start off thinking about the five of hearts. That's just a lowly little five of hearts. What could I do with the five of hearts? But as we look around the table at those who we're paired with, we're the only one that knows that we have a lowly five of hearts. So as I look at my five of hearts, and I look around the table at those who think maybe I have the ace of hearts. They don't know, unless of course they have the ace of hearts, <laughs> that I only have the five. And so it is about how we play our cards in life. Each of us is dealt a different hand. We can't control where we're born. We can't control those who raised us, but throughout life, as we understand the power of the cards that were dealt, 
as we understand what we can do with the five of hearts, that's the determination that we can bring inside ourselves and we can bring out to determine how we're going to play those cards. So as I look out around the table of those who I'm playing against, I will find the right time to play the five of hearts. I will find the time to surprise them with the power of the five of hearts. Now, if they have the six of hearts and they beat me, at least I'll know I gave it my best shot. Madam Toastmaster. May we have one minute of silence while the judges mark their ballots. Topics contestant number six, Steve Serby. Life is like a game of cards. The hand that is dealt to you represents determinism. The way you play it is free will. How will you play a five of hearts? Steve Serby. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, how would I play a five of hearts? Just last weekend, I attended a swimming event for the Special Olympics of Illinois. These kids all have handicaps, mental, handicaps, intellectually challenged. But they are so determined, it was truly inspiring. There was one race in particular. It was a freestyle, four laps. They had six swimmers competing. One swimmer in particular was way, way behind the pack. In fact, she was swimming the freestyle with one arm. The other five contestants, for young adults, probably the ages of 18 through, I say, 35. Some are very good swimmers, some not so good. The other five contestants swam pretty decently. They're doing the freestyle, they're going as fast as they can. They were really encouraged and inspired to do their best. This young lady who had one arm was trying her best to do the freestyle. She fell so far behind the pack by the time she finished her four laps, she was minutes behind the other team players. But the audience stood and gave her a standing ovation for the effort that she gave. She got a better ovation than the first place winner. If I had five cards, deal, I'd deal the same way. And I'm Toastmaster. Everyone, please remain silent while the judges complete their ballots and have them selected by the ballot counters.
ballots are collected. So now at this moment, we're going to hear from Sumini Vaz, who will give us some details about our upcoming District 30 conference. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Dostmaster, fellow Dostmasters. This year, unlike the table topics topic, we were dead good cards. In this year. <laughs> we had wonderful contests everywhere I go. All the six divisions this year had great contests. But we're also dead cards where the international president is going to visit us this year. And this happens only once in six years. Once in six years. Now, some might say this only happened because I Happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we're not, not going to go there. So, how many of you have never been to a district conference? You don't want to miss this one. So let me let me sequentially take you through the conference. On Friday at six o'clock, I'm excited about this because I'm going to make some opening comments that day, so you don't want to miss that. Right? <laughs> then we are going to have the table topics contest. The winners from this contest are going to move on and be contestants at the table topics contest. After that, the Toastmasters International President is going to have a keynote speech on. Let me look. <laughs> He's going to have a keynote speech on Toastmasters achieving greatness together. Now here's my pitch. Who wants, who here wants to take a picture of their club members with the Toastmasters International President? We yeah. are. Oh, oh. <laughs> everybody. So anybody, any, can anybody tell me what do you need to do in order to get a picture with the Toastmasters International President? Come and answer. Be, be, be distinguished. Club needs to be distinguished. By? April 13th. April 13th. By April 13th, if you are distinguished. Not only you get to take a picture with the international president, I will be in that picture too. <laughs> there is one more incentive. On, on Saturday morning, I, I like free stuff. I like free stuff. Like, who likes to have a free breakfast in the morning? Oh, yes. yes. All you have to do is achieve an educational award by April 13th. April 13th. And you'll be invited to a free breakfast with me and the international president. Right? Right. You get all the freebies. I know. But, but after, the, after the achievers breakfast, uh, the international president is going to give a keynote speech on leading out loud. Leading out loud. You don't want to miss that. Then we are going to have some, a fun business meeting. How many of you use parliamentary procedure at your club meetings? <laughs> Some people do. This is going to be parliamentary, parliamentary procedure on steroids. So you don't want to miss the business <laughs> meeting, especially if you're a president or a vice president of education. Uh, we are doing some important club business. We are realigning the district to uh, align us for future growth. We are also electing future leaders. After that, uh, we're going to have lunch, and the Toastmasters International President is going to talk again. So he said, we're going to work him. Work him like a horse. <laughs> so, let me check again. What is he speaking on, Jerry? At lunch? Thank God for the smartphone. <laughs> He's going to talk about Toastmasters where leaders are made. Again, the theme is leaders, leadership. After that, the cream de la cream of Toastmasters, the international speech contest. I've been to four of the five division contests. I missed one of them today, and I'm not going to be excused from that forever. <laughs> but I know they are all wonderful contestants, and then the winner from here is going to move on to the International Speech Contest. That will start at 4 <coughs> p.m. on Saturday. You don't want to miss that, because chances are the winner there is going to win it all and become the world champion of our next Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> And finally, after dinner, we are going to have the international president speak again. And this time he's going to speak about achievement, 
an encouragement. How many of you are here because somebody encouraged you to join those masters? Right? So after after listening to this speech, we're just going to spawn those masters all around Chicago. Right? So I want to see each and every one of you at the conference. And where is this? Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza. 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 Plaza and Rosemont. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Matthew. We'll now have our 10-minute break. There's refreshments in the back. Thank you, everyone, for following the rules. <laughs>